Hello, members. I want to welcome you so much to my YouTube channel, Life, Life Stories with Kansime Grace. Thank you so much for the life that you showed. Uh, to those who subscribed, thank you so much. To those that are yet to subscribe, I'm looking forward. To the new members, thank you so much. And please learn so much, as much as you can, and enjoy the stories. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to give a comment. In the event that you want to meet with me and to share with me your own story so that we can pray through it and get guidance on how I overcame mine, please don't hesitate to drop me a message. Today, we are going to take lessons from uh, the characteristics of an abused child. Uh, taking lessons from how the trauma that I experienced shaped my life. And then on Monday, we shall be going back to storytelling. Uh, uh, on Monday, we shall be talking about how um, I, I, I experienced uh, the women challenges at, at, the, at that age that I did and uh, how I handled it and how it brought uh, a, a complete turnaround in my life, maybe breaking me to that point that uh, I thought was a point of no return. But for today, let us talk about the effect of the trauma that I experienced at the early age, uh, how it shaped my character, how it shaped my, it almost ruined my physical looks, how it uh, almost uh, got me to fail to get a relationship at all. First and foremost, uh, when a child is abused, either socially, morally, physically, uh, and the trauma is deep hidden inside, these are the signs that you will know that your child is not okay or someone under your care is not doing so fine. Number one, the loss of confidence. A child that is abused will first and foremost lose confidence. I know I lost so much confidence in myself, in life, in everything, that even telling me I was beautiful was uh, unacceptable to me. And uh, remember, at some, at some stage, I was told I had stick legs. I was told... Uh, I had uh, an ugly face. I was told my stomach was so big. I was told my feet were like for a duck. And so for someone to tell me there was anything good about me, I didn't believe in that person. In fact, I developed so much anger and hate to whoever tried to flatter me. I called it flattering. Whoever tried to tell me anything good about myself, I developed so much anger that I didn't even want to to relate with that person uh, once again. And uh, because of the low confidence, I, I always found myself judging, judging everyone. If anyone said anything good, I would say, mm -mm, he's saying it because of this. I always had something negative about everything. And that was one, low self-esteem. I struggled with that for quite a long time. And I must say, even up to this time, sometimes, I, I find it so uh, not so easy to receive love and uh, appreciation for anything good that I do. I kind of feel uh, I don't deserve to be appreciated. I don't deserve to be thanked. Although I am working, I'm working about it. Um, though I, I can say I've overcome, but there is some residue of that low confidence. Number two, there is lack of trust. I reached a point that I do not trust anyone around me. It doesn't matter how far you come to prove yourself that I can trust you. I didn't trust anyone. I didn't trust anyone. I didn't trust myself. And when you do not trust people, you end up rejecting, rejecting people, rejecting everyone, even those who mean good. You reject everyone. And let me tell you that uh, what when you reject people so much, it comes to the level that that rejection that you're giving out to people eventually comes back to you. You attract what you give. I rejected, rejected everyone. I rejected anything that was good. I rejected 
you know, I really rejected. I didn't trust at all. And it turned out that uh, I carried rejection on my life. I will later on tell you what happened to me at the age of 13 because of that rejection. And so I rejected, I didn't trust, and I bottled it all within me. And then number three, I always wanted to be isolated. I stayed alone. I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to relate with anyone. I felt everyone else had uh, what I craved for. And I felt like I God had abandoned me. I felt the world had closed in on me. And so I didn't want to anything to do with anyone that was good. Anyone that um, I felt had a better life than mine. I turned away. I turned away people who tried to love me. I turned away uh, anyone who wanted to be kind to me. And I spent much of my life isolated. In fact, I enjoyed those times when nobody was at home, uh, when uh, I, I was just alone, I, I could go just behind the house and sit and console myself in singing my favorite song, which was Amazing Grace. And, and that's all, until my grandmother would look for me and find me and, and talk to me. And then uh, number four, relationships. I, I don't think I, I carried... Uh, so much relationship with uh, the opposite sex. I didn't carry so much relationship with uh, uh, like trusting friends because I always thought they are coming my way for one thing or the other. And so I, I literally turned away every relationship that came. And uh, fortunately, at a later stage, we'll talk about how my husband won over my heart and how he helped me to overcome the, the, the baggage that he, he, he easily identified. And uh, I also was easy. I didn't deny. I didn't deny anything. When he told me, like, you seem like you do not trust anyone. You, you are holding on to so much. What is that that you cannot let go? That is how bad uh, abuse can carry. Many relationships, uh, people are married to, to spouses. They do not uh, understand why they behave in such a manner. Your wife can wake up and shout. Uh, maybe you saw her, she was a good girl, she was quiet, she was good. And then all of a sudden she starts shouting. Before you close that relationship out, before you consider it dead, dig, where did this person come from? How can I help this person to be a better person? And let me tell you, the moment you help someone overcome their fears, overcome their traumas, overcome the challenges that they've bottled in their lives for quite a long time, you will get the best spouse. Uh, my husband tells me that he, he, he is so blessed to have me. And I keep telling him, I am so blessed to have him in my life because I don't know what would have happened if I got uh, a spouse who didn't understand, uh, the, who didn't have the gift of patience, to be patient, to, to teach me how to love, to teach me how to be free, to teach me how to be myself, you know? And I, I was also ready to, to give up, to give up my pain, to lay it down. Uh, uh -huh. And, uh, I remember one time uh, I didn't want to study. I didn't want to go back to do my degree because of an incident that happened to me. I remember at one time I got a scholarship and I was supposed to go out of the country. And, uh, and uh, I was told I cannot go. I was told I cannot start behaving like a, a, a child who has a father because at that time, Everyone knew I was an orphan. I also knew I was an orphan and I didn't ask who my father was or, or, or who my, my paternal relatives were. That story will come on Monday, how I got to know my, my paternal parents. And so I was told I was an orphan, so I cannot expect anything like going out of the country, even if I had a scholarship. 
And so I didn't get a passport. I didn't get uh, a ticket because that is all that I required. And so I bottled that in my heart and I told myself, let me study the diploma they asked me to study. I will never, never go back to school to study any degree. But my husband forced me lovingly. He convinced me, actually not forced me. He convinced me to go back and study. And I went, I studied the degree of my dreams, which was in uh, information technology. And I excelled with the first class to the glory of God. So a child who has been abused, even when you give something good, they will reject it. And I want you to watch out for the signs uh, of an abused child in your home. If you have your daughter, and then there is this one uncle who wants to beat this child time and again, or this relative that wants to harass, that is always reporting this child to you, watch out. There may be something this uncle wants from this girl that he hasn't gotten that uh, causes this uncle to beat this girl and, for, and, and, you know, gets you into the trap of punishing this girl so much. If this relative is beating your daughter, is reporting, is so keen on disciplining, is so keen on taking this child away from your home to their home, I really want you to know that there is something this uncle must be covering, covering for. Maybe there is something he's so worried that this child will speak out. And so to you as a mother, as a father, as a guardian, watch out for people who take so much interest in your children in, and they want to discipline them and they want them to take them to their homes. Watch out. Otherwise, these children may never may never forgive you when they have grown up because of what they have gone through. And uh, lastly, I became so rebellious. Rebellious, although I was quiet, even if you called me to do something, I would come and do it. But my heart would despise you. My heart would hate you. If there was a way I could say no, I would say it. If you ask me to stand, I would stand, but in my heart, I would be seated down. Now, there are some people who rebel beyond um, bottling it down. They will rebel, they will go to drugs, uh, they will drink, they will go uh, for sex, they will sleep around if they are girls, for the boys, they will go for drugs, they will steal, they will do anything weird just to, to as a sign to show you that, you know, Everyone has given up on me. There is nothing good about me. And so I have nothing at all to protect. And so they will just give up on life. If you see a child that has given up on life, please get to the bottom of this and find out why they are giving up. I remember I shared with one child. I met one child who was rejected by their family and nobody wanted anything to do because the boy was embarrassing the family. He was into drugs and drinking and women. And I sat with this boy. I said, you know, you must be a good boy, but there must be something that is eating you up. What is it? And he said, what do you want to talk to me? I'm a drug addict. I am rejected. I am. I said, look at me. I was in a worse situation than you, but I did not take drugs. I did not steal. I did not do those things that you're doing, but I reached a point where I contemplated suicide. Suicide. I wanted to die. I wanted to kill myself, but the grace of God helped me and I didn't kill myself. I said, can I walk with you this journey? And I told this young man, uh, how many of those things do you take? And he told me, I smoke 10 of them. I, you know, I almost skipped a bit. I almost failed to breathe. And I said, okay, let's work together. After maybe some time, can you reduce to eight? And he reduced to eight and he reduced to five and he reduced to three. And then when he came to smoking two of those drugs, I told him now, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry because what you are going to do, I want your body to accept that you're going to break from it, your mind to accept it. And it took us one month for this boy to win from drugs. 
Now see, this boy had me to help him. He is from a family that is so dear to me. This boy had a, a person who walked with him to realize that a rebellion just doesn't come as rebellion. It is an underlying problem. And we walked to this journey and he overcame. Did I have someone to walk this journey with me? No. Did I have someone to tell me I understand where you're coming from, why you you just smile to pretend that you, you know you're happy when actually you're crumbling? No. Did I have someone to tell me that it can be okay, that this character that you, 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 you have developed, you can change it because I was quiet, I was angry, I had uh, developed, you know, bended shoulders because I was trying to hide my stomach. I, I used to sit with folded legs because I was trying to hold to hide my stick legs. You know, everything that they talked about. Now, let me tell you, this abuse doesn't just affect your character. It affects your physical looks. You see, someone who is being told you're ugly, someone who is always angry, you're going to squeeze your face like. And before you know it, there are they are wrinkles and, and the bones have changed on their face and, and your eyes are sinking in and the smiles is gone and your lips have pulled out. So emotional, physical and social abuse affects your character, affects your relationship, affects your your physical looks, it affects you know your personality. It destroys you as a person. Abuse destroys a person. And if God does not help, child abuse leads to death. Child abuse, the trauma that comes with it, kills a person. This is my final word. If God has blessed you with the the gift of children, protect them with your life. God himself hides us under the shadow of his wings to show how important we are to him. The children under our care, we are supposed to protect them with our lives. If God has given you resources, never abuse that child under your care because they do not have. You do not know what is in store for that child tomorrow? I thank you so much. I pray that you will find it in your heart to love, to treat well every child that God brings your way, whether they are biological, whether they are spiritual children. God bless you and God give you a lesson and God comfort you.